Hello and welcome to the weekly Wednesday lunchtime live stream. Really appreciate you joining us on uh, what for you may be a snowy, rainy Wednesday afternoon here. I'm Community Manager Cordovan and I think I'm the loudest person right now in the entire office because I'm uh, uh, live streaming and uh, it's kind of a kind of a slow day in the office. A lot of people are working from home today. We have uh, some uh, rain that's supposed to turn to freezing rain and snow in the New England area. So a lot of people, plus, you know, combined with uh, pre-Thanksgiving travel and all that sort of thing, just kind of uh, are not in the office today. They're working from home. Uh, but uh, but nonetheless, I'm here for the live stream, and uh, we've got a lot to talk about. We're going to be talking about Update 24. We're on Lamania, the public preview server, and it is open to the public. So if you uh, want to check out Update 24 on Lamania, you can. Uh, you can find a link to how to access Lamania on the DDO forums. And uh, I guess I can uh, post a link uh, to that in the uh, notes as well. I want to do an introduction. Uh, with me this week is Varguil. How are you doing, Varguil? Howdy, howdy. I'm, I am calling in from home, so I did not <laughs> want to brave the snow today. Yeah, I almost did it. But I woke up and I, I saw that it was really just kind of raining at this point. So I was like, well, I got enough to do in the office. It's worth a, worth a trip. But, uh, but you're not alone. It's, uh, it's pretty quiet in here today. <laughs> Let's just say there are lots of bagels that remain uneaten. <laughs> yeah. We have a bagel day at work, so. All right, so uh, what are the before we get to uh, say the barbarian enhancement trees and some of the other stuff, I thought I'd talk a little bit about what's going on this week in uh, DDO. So just a couple hours ago, we activated a plus twenty percent heroic and epic XP boost. Uh, this is for DDO bonus days. On top of that, we actually extended last week's boost all the way through this weekend. So you're getting 20% Heroic and Epic XP, along with Double Daily Dice XP. And that'll run through Sunday. Also, throughout the day today, we're rolling out all of our, uh, I guess what you might call Black Friday specials and Cyber Monday stuff and all that sort of thing. You know, the, the holiday sales that everyone's uh, a big part of around here in the U.S. And uh, among the things we have uh, already uh, announced is our double bonus points. We have that going on uh, through the weekend. And uh, let's see, what else? Uh, there's one other thing that's already been announced here. We, uh, we get that. Oh yeah, Heroic and Epic Autos Boxes. Uh, we have Autos Boxes back through the weekend as well. They're running until December 1st. Uh, we do have a bunch of DDO Store regular weekly sales that will be going up later this afternoon. In addition, we've got a whole bunch more Black Friday deals, so stay tuned to our social media channels, say Facebook, Twitter, uh, Google+, Plus, uh, the forums. Uh, we're going to put it in the launcher feed eventually as well. Uh, throughout the afternoon, we'll be bringing in additional bonuses as the work gets done and and all that sort of thing. So we've got a whole bunch of stuff that's going to be on sale this week uh, through the weekend uh, for, uh, you know, just uh, the, the regular holiday weekend and all that sort of thing. I know we're going to be doing a deep discount, say, on the expansions like Menace of the Underdark and Shadowfell Conspiracy, uh, plus five Hearts of Wood, and a whole bunch of other things as well. So I'm not going to go through the whole list or uh, beat all of our messaging uh, to the punch, but uh, there's a lot to look forward to. So double bonus points plus out those boxes. Or double bonus points plus deep discounts on, say, uh, Menace of the Underdark and Shadowfell. So some uh, some pretty good uh, good opportunities there for those who might be interested in such things. Uh, so we are back on uh, Lamania here for Update 24. And this is going to be, uh, this is planned for, to be released to fairly soon. Uh, it should be the uh, first half of December if all goes well in terms of when it's actually going to be released to the live servers. But we just uh, put together a new update. Um... And I think I might. I'm sorry, give me just a quick second here. I think I've got uh, someone who just sent me an invite. Uh, let's see if I can get him on, on the show. Give me just a second here. Uh, we would like to hear you guys uh, chat with us as well, so if that is something of interest to you, uh, we'd love to hear your questions. If we can answer them, I guarantee you we will. Uh, we'll do our best to answer all the questions that we uh, get in uh, chat. Um, <clears throat> uh, Civic Spoon asks, DDO store expansion sales or sales via, say, the DDO market? I actually need to look that one up. Sorry, I don't know. Uh, I guess we'll find out uh, when it gets announced uh, later this afternoon. Um, let's see. Videos working on Twitch. Yeah, I noticed I was having a few little chat issues uh, getting uh, Twitch going here, but I haven't, uh, haven't uh, seen it... Uh, Caused too many problems in the last 10 minutes, so I don't know if that's just a Twitch thing going on or what that is, but, uh, alright. 
unfortunately. Not not having much luck getting uh, getting Severlin on the uh, call with us here. He said he said he sent me a Skype uh, request, but I've not seen it. So maybe he sent it to the wrong Jerry Snook. I, you know, let's say that's something I'd love to see uh, Skype uh, figure out is is a little bit better way to um, to get this stuff done. So unfortunately, it's not uh, not working for me. That's a bummer. Give it another minute, I guess, to see if I can do that. Anyway, uh, Varguil, so uh, tell me a little bit. What what are you doing right now in Update 24? Uh, what's some of the stuff that you've been working on, say, this past week that, that we think we could talk about? Um, so, I mean, there, I think most of the... At this point, pretty much every, almost everything is public information. Uh, I have been doing a lot of work on Monster Champions and fixing a lot of bugs in Barbarian and some other enhancements, but mostly Barbarian stuff, uh, new and old bugs as well. Um, the Monster Champion stuff has been very exciting. We're, we're really glad some people have been playing with it on Lemania and giving us some feedback and finding a few things that were not quite right. Some of the uh, stacking dots were doing quite a bit of damage and similar, similar balance things. And it, We're glad to see a lot of players are excited about it as well. Um, so, amongst the barbarian changes, I don't know if I... Oh, sorry, I actually muted myself. <laughs> ah, there we go. Hey, yeah, sorry about that. I was actually just going to say that I, uh, um, uh, it's kind of a crunch time here for you guys. Oh, I think, I think, maybe I have got Rob on now, or, uh, sorry, it's uh, let's see. Yeah, this is mostly the time where we're trying to make sure we clean up any bugs and get final polish and lap last minute tweaks so to speak I mean we do last minute tweaks for quite a while but yep yep all yeah, right hello. Uh, hello hello uh are you there Severlin I am all right good deal. we are live yeah we are live right now on the air sorry to uh, kind of throw you into it here but uh, you're sounding just fine and uh, you too are uh, not braving the uh, snow and ice and uh, winter weather here so uh, we got a couple people uh, basically calling in from home uh, uh, taking care of the storm, so. Yep. All right, so uh, we're here to talk. Uh, why don't we start a little bit with uh, the barbarian enhancement uh, trees here? And uh, we do have a. You'll notice right now a little bug on uh, Lamania where it looks like our ravager enhancement is in the race enhancements column rather than uh, the half orc, which is what I currently am. I don't know if that's just a demo character problem or if that's a something we're going to need to fix. <laughs> it, it's probably, as far as I know, it's an admin problem only. Oh, is it? Okay, okay, there we go. Yes, I am on an admin character, so I could just kind of quick run commands as I need. All right, so the Ravager, the Frenzied Berserker, and the Occult Slayer are not new enhancement trees to the Barbarian. They've been around for some time, but we've really renovated them for Update 24. Um, could, do either of you want to give me kind of a big picture as to as a general rule, what are we looking at here for some of these changes? Sure. For the Occult Slayer, we focused on their mitigation. So they're more, you might call them more tanky, although they're not necessarily tended to be tanks. And their mitigation is more focused on uh, shrugging off magical damage and doing things to shut down casters. For the Frenzied Berserker, the Frenzied Berserker is... Uh, area of effect DPS. They do a lot of cleaves and they do a lot of damage that causes uh, uh, damage to a wide variety of creatures all around them. So uh, they're pr probably one of the best damaging trees in the game in terms of just doing AoE. Some of the other DPS trees might be close to them in single target DPS, but they, they, they're intended to be um, heavy for AoE. Uh, we've tuned down their mitigation a little bit and tuned up their DPS in response to the player's request that they have a barbarian build that can basically be at the forefront of damage dealing capabilities. And finally, Ravager is intended to focus on the blood rage and have blood powers. In fact, their tier 5 ability will even heal them a little bit as they attack things and their single target damage is uh, is intended to be uh, very good in addition to having some good utility. 
You know, uh, barbarians have long been a pretty popular class in uh, DDO, and I think with some of the, uh, you know, just changes that have taken place in, in recent years, uh, systems-wise, you know, new enhancements, epic uh, levels and all that, perhaps uh, barbarians uh, were not quite as uh, shiny as they used to be. So that's uh, really one of the reasons we're focusing on them for update uh, 24 here. You know, players have long thought of barbarians as, you know, the primary thing, rage and, you know, anger and, and dishing out the damage. Maybe not uh, being able to tank as well as, say, a, a fighter or paladin or something like that, but able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and really just uh, dish out a lot of damage. You know, we have a game uh, right now where there I healing is very important, so and mitigation, damage mitigation is very important as well. And so that's part of what we're doing with the uh, uh, barbarian trees here, is trying to increase some of that... that uh, that sort of basically ability not just to dish out damage, but to stay alive while doing it. A dead barbarian has zero DPS. Yes, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> well, let's see. Yeah, I suppose that's true, right? All right, so why don't we uh, focus a little bit on the Ravager. Uh, we're not going to go through all three trees point by point, but I thought we'd kind of at least take them by tier. So the uh, Ravager core enhancements uh, begin with Furious Rage. So if you're raging and miss your attack by rolling a 1, you'll get a Fury, which is a plus, rage, uh, plus 1 Rage bonus to attack and damage. can stack up to 6 times, and it fades over time. Uh, pain Touch, your melee attacks deal 1d6 extra damage, and it does scale with melee power. You also get uh, plus 10 healing amplification. Why don't we talk a little bit about uh, this one, just because it, it really deals with some concepts that we'll see throughout the tree. One, the damage scaling with melee power. So the more melee power you have, uh, the more these enhancements are going to lead to extra damage for you. Well, overall, one of the things that... Um one of the facts of DDO previously was once you hit Epic, it was all about straight damage and crits because that was the only thing that scaled well. So there's a lot of things that add D6s, like in the pen and paper game, that just were overshadowed by um, other enhancements. So what we've done is we've added melee power as a way to scale those up. And since you naturally get melee power as you level in your Epic levels, all of those small boosts to damage will also scale up with those and become proportionally more interesting rather than just being left by the wayside. So melee power is a balancing system in a, uh, intended to give us tools to allow things to scale. Right. And we did uh, discuss this last week, but just to reiterate for those who missed last week's show, healing amplification is changing in update 24. Rather than being a percentage-based benefit, which is how it's been up until now, we're adding, we're making it an additive benefit, and we're also making it, uh, you know, stack more consistently, and really work a little more consistently with, say, melee power and ranged power and uh, uh, magic resistance rating and that kind of thing. One of the difficult things about healing amp previously is because it was multiplicative, we had no way of telling the relative power of putting out a healing amp a healing amplification ability or enhancement. Um, for instance, let's say we put out a healing amplification uh, augment, which many players have been asking for. How much healing does that boost? Uh, in the past, we really couldn't say because for a paladin monk human build, the boost might have been tremendous. When a heal hit you, it could have been an extra 100 points. And for someone who didn't have that, the healing could be as low as 10. Um, because it was multiplicative. Um, now that it's additive, when we add that, we have, it's much easier to balance because we know how much extra healing that that represents. And now we can begin to use Healing Amp once again in new augments and in new gear and because we can keep a handle on how these things stack. And for most people, this will be a uh, benefit. Some of the extreme high-end healing amplification builds, you know, those that were in the, oh, let's say, 800% plus range, <laughs> you know, we'll see some of that scaled back a little bit. But they're going to, uh, you know, get additional benefits from these to hopefully offset that stuff. But for most people, it's going to be a net benefit here. Uh, I think it's, yep. it's also worth pointing out one of the things I did in the last week is if you open your character sheet and mouse over the, the hit points, the actual number for your hit points, you should be able to see a tooltip, this is already on Lamanya, that tells you your healing amplification. 
for positive, negative, and repair, which are separate scales, yeah, as they always right. have been. But uh, it, it, but the but the benefit comes from the same sources, right? So if you're getting some from positive, and you can be uh, get a benefit from negative, that'll <coughs> show up too, correct? Right. You yeah. yes. You basically there are three different stats, and yeah, as it turns out, you have sixty positive healing amplification. Yes. Uh, yeah. So exactly. All right, so uh, just uh, real quick, uh, finishing up the uh, core trees here. Demoralizing success uh, gives you some hit points, and then when you score a Vorpal hit, you'll inflict Crushing Despair if uh, the enemy fails a DC-20 will saving throw. And uh, there's some other things there well, but it, predominantly it's uh, hit points, uh, additional healing amplification, and then the ability to do Crushing Despair. Uh, pain Touch uh, ups your uh, melee attacks to deal 2d6 extra damage, again scaling with melee power. And uh, you'll get additional hit points and uh, healing amplification from that. Uh, subsiding Fury, when you use Rage, you'll get three stacks of Fury, which again is a uh, plus one Rage bonus to attack and damage that fades over time. And then finally, the uh, top core enhancement here on the Ravager tree is Visage of Terror. Uh, terrorize an enemy, killing them with fear. If they fail a will save versus 10 plus your constitution modifier plus half of your barbarian level. Enemies who make the saving throw will be briefly paralyzed with fear instead. Uh, do you know approximately how long that uh, brief is? So I, I can give a better update. We This is something we worked on yesterday, even very recently. Uh, we're actually changing this to be an AoE that affects up to six enemies. So and each one of the, you could potentially kill each one of them if they fail the saving throw. And the paralyze is we're increasing it from three to six seconds. Okay. So... So have lots of constitution, which is generally a good advice anyway. <laughs> I, I believe also the Paralyze in the past was bugged that it had a saving throw and it shouldn't. Yes, it was a very high saving throw, but it still meant there was a 5% chance that every enemy would still make that saving throw if they rolled their natural 20. So we did fix a bug with the Paralyze as well. Sure. And then passively in this one, you'll get plus 40 or constitution, 150 hit points, and 40 healing amplifications. This, uh, this all adds up to... Uh, throughout the cores here, quite a few hit points and uh, additional healing amp. Uh, heading to a uh, tier one, ritual scarring gives you a uh, plus one, two, or three, depending on points spent. Intimidate, haggle, and physical resistance rating. Pretty basic there. Uh, hate will deal an additional half weapon damage and generate extra threat. A lot of barbarians are often uh, big into their intimidate and this will help uh, help with that. But additionally, uh, it goes up to 1.5 weapon damage after you've uh, spent all three ranks in it. Uh, and that just, you know, if your weapon did, uh, say, one weapon of 1d6, it'll do, uh, you know, one and a half that. So it'd be a total of, uh, you know, two and a half uh, 1d6. So I said that right, didn't I? I think yeah, I, I think so. Right. Yeah, I okay. Think that was right. uh, do you like pain? Uh, when you are hit, 20% chance for an attacker to lose 10 armor class. That goes 40% and 60% as you uh, go up in your points. And that is a passive benefit, which is kind of nice. Uh, barbarian power attack. Your power attack feat does an additional point of damage, two additional points, and three additional points as you spend in this enhancement. So uh, if you're a barbarian, chances are you have power attack, and this is a way to uh, do additional damage with that power attack. Uh, it's worth pointing out we also this used to have a penalty where you lost additional armor class while using power attack, and we removed that penalty. So that's one of the changes for update 24. Right, right. And then finally, plus one, plus two, or plus three constitution when raging. So uh, as you rage, you'll get uh, get more hit points, and that goes back to the survivability. On a tier two, uh, fear me. When you intimidate, affected enemies are shaken for six seconds. That gives them a minus two on attack rolls, saving throws, and skill checks. Uh, so if you're, you know, someone who uses intimidate frequently, this is a, a way to just kind of help out during combat. There, um, mutilate. Uh, hate additionally deals a one d four charisma damage and one d four bane damage. Bane damage skills two hundred percent with melee power. Uh, monsters with a zero in an ability score are considered helpless and uh, receive half extra damage, and that's as it is currently in the game. So you're probably already spending hate to get this additional weapon damage from tier one, and if you're going to do that, uh, you can do mutilate as well to do additional charisma damage and bane damage. And one nice thing about bane damage is uh, it doesn't tend to be um, countered very often. It's countered by virtually nothing except, I think, DR damage reduction to dash. 
Okay. Yep. So, so basic DR, right? Yeah. All right. So, uh, tier two here. I like pain. When you are hit, small chance to gain 50 temporary hit points. And this scales with 100% melee power. So, if you are a high melee power build, uh, you could potentially get quite a few temporary hit points when you're hit. And that, uh, you know, is sort of a, a partner to the tier one version of Do You Like Pain for losing a. Uh, they will have a chance to lose a C. Uh, Cruel Cut is an active attack. It's a melee attack that deals 1d6 extra constitution damage as long as you damage your target. That goes up to 2d6 and 3d6 as you spend the uh, various points in the tree. So this is just a way to do uh, straight uh, straight con damage to your enemies. So, not much more to say about that. Uh, action boost, uh, melee power in tier 2. It's a plus 10 action boost bonus to melee power for 20 seconds. That scales up to plus 20 and plus 30 action boost as you spend points in the tree. And again, that's a, an activated uh, ability with a uh, 30 second cooldown and uh, lasts for 20 seconds, similar to other action boosts. The nice thing about the melee power boost is not only does it boost all of your damage, um, including the things that scale with melee power, but because your temporary hit points scale with melee power, you can hit that boost and get extra defense. Looks like someone's uh, telling us about a potential Lamania bug right now with Do You Like Pain? Uh, Banjo174 says, I noticed that it isn't decreasing the enemy's AC as of right now. At least in PvP, so, you know, testing out with a friend, it's upping their AC rather than uh, lowering it. So perhaps we're going to have to get that one fixed there. <laughs> we'll have to take a look at that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we will do that. Uh, Technical 13 mentions, I see double shot is in the attack speed, double speed area now. This is, again, looking at the uh, character sheet. And, right, uh, we added a new tooltip. Yep. yep, so a double shot is in there. Uh and uh, Technical 13 is suggesting as well that we put movement speed in there somewhere. Find a way to get your movement speed on the character sheet. So, we'll, we'll take that under uh, consideration. Alright, uh, looking uh, more at the tier 3 here. Slaughter is a melee attack. This is an active attack that deals plus 5 weapon damage, plus 7.5, or plus 10 weapon damage. It has a cooldown of 30 seconds. So that's, uh, that, that's powerful. That's a heck of a lot of damage there if you looking at plus 10 plus all the other stuff that you've got going on in the tree here. Right. We also drastically reduced the cooldown on that, so you sh we'll be able to do that quite a bit more often. I think it used to be two minutes, yep. if I'm remembering. Uh, Festering Wound, uh, your Cruel Cut active ability inflicts 1d6 poison damage for every two seconds, and the target loses half of their healing amplification for five seconds. The poison damage scales 200% with melee power. And then as you uh, go up in the tree, it inflicts two attacks and then three attacks. So it does more of those poison damage attacks uh, every two seconds. Uh, finally, for the ability score, uh, what do we have here? We have uh, Constitution and Strength. Real basic ones there. Do you want to uh, hit harder and more often? Although often barbarians don't have too difficult time hitting. So uh, Constitution is a way to just get more hit points there, of course. So... All right, looking at our uh, Tier 4, Laughter, when Slaughter, which is the Tier 3 ability, uh, strikes an enemy, uh, you gain three stacks of Fury. And when Slaughter scores a critical hit, you gain three more Fury uh, and ten melee power for 15 seconds. Fury, again, is a plus one rage bonus to attack and damage that can stack. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty basic there, I guess. This is really something that, you know, if, if you're investing in this tree, you'll probably want Slaughter because plus 10 weapon damage, that's why. And uh, Laughter will just give you an additional bonus uh, to that. Uh, I hit back. When you are hit, there's a 20% chance to deal 2d8 Bane damage, scaling 100% with melee power. That goes up to 48 and 68 as you uh, spend in the tree. So I think the idea for a lot of these Ravager abilities is it's not just you dishing it out, but if they do get through your defenses, then you're additionally doing other things to them, like damage and, and uh, you know, potential to do the uh, AC reduction and all that sort of thing. And get yourself uh, temporary hit points on that. Alright, uh, Dismember. Cruel Cut increases melee power by 5 for 10 seconds and slows enemy movement speed or slows attack speed or deals 2d4 bane damage or deals 64 bane damage and skills with melee power. What's with all the ores? So thematically, this is you chopping off someone's limbs or maybe their head. 
and dealing a bunch of damage or affecting their movement speed or attack speed if it's their legs or their arms. That that was the long ago lore that was explained to me for this one. So, so it just is it kind of random in terms of which one it does. Yeah, it'll pick one of them. It'll always do at least one, but <coughs> it is randomized. Cool. And then uh, finally, we have another ability to up your constitution or strength. Now let's look at the uh, tier five here. Uh, blood strength. Every time you land a hit there is a 20% chance you will be healed for a number of points equal to your barbarian level. Each time you kill an opponent, you'll be healed for the same amount, and this scales 100% with melee power. So let's say you've got 100 melee power, um, and you're a level 20 barbarian. That means you would get, uh, if I'm thinking about this right, uh, 120 hit points every time you land a hit? Uh, so it, it would be when you heal. Chance of it, right? Yeah. So if you if you would normally heal twenty with zero melee power, then having a hundred, then having a hundred melee power doubles it. So you would heal forty. Oh right, right. Okay, sorry. That's, that's bad math on my part. Okay, uh, well, but, but nonetheless, forty every time if, as a chance, you know, one in five chance approximately uh, when you land a hit. Uh, that's a good way to help keep you up, and uh, I think this was, uh, it, was this changed in, re this was changed recently, right, in terms of our plans for Update 24? Um, so I think the current version is a 12% chance, and the kill is a static 20 points, ignoring your, it doesn't actually care about your Barbarian level. The on-hit still cares about your Barbarian level. And some of that is in response to player feedback and our internal play tests. We had a bunch of different people playing with this. Um, and it's numbers that could still change over time as we ex yes, experience with, with it. All right. Uh, and then Bully, uh, you deal plus 5, 10, or 15% damage to helpless enemies. Uh, helpless, say, often maybe being the ones that were paralyzed earlier or, uh, you know, are helpless through maybe a caster you've got with you. However they get helpless, uh, taking con damage uh, or charisma damage, that sort of thing, uh, you'll basically just deal extra damage to them. Uh, critical Fury, while raging, each hit also grants one stack of Fury. So this is a way to really increase that uh, Fury ability while you're raging. So we should say we actually pulled this from oh, the build yes, recently. Okay. Uh, the, the player feedback on it was that essentially there were a lot of ways to gain Fury at, at this point, And by the time you're a level 12 Barbarian, you probably don't need this. And we did fill it in with a new ability, which is currently uh, tentatively titled uncanny balance which if you take it you cannot you ignore most you are immune to most forms of knockdown and slippery surfaces very similar to an a an acrobat ability okay all right and then uh, rounding out our ravager tree here is critical rage increases your critical threat range by one while raging or by two while raging if you invest a second uh, point into it so uh or two extra points i guess technically if you go into the second uh tier? What are we calling that? We call the, I, yeah. we usually call them ranks. Ranks. There oh. we go. There we go. Alright, so uh, just a basic way to increase your threat range, which is uh, always... Uh, before we move on to the Frenzy Berserker and Occult Slayer, I wanted to uh, take a question from our chat room. You know, as we've been bringing in these Barbarian Enhancement uh, changes, you know, this follows on the heels of doing similar work for the Paladin in uh, Update uh, 23. And so we have some folks in chat basically uh, trying to do some comparisons between paladins and barbarians in terms of overall DPS. Do you guys have a general sense of where you feel the barbarian fits along the line in comparison to a paladin? Uh, right now I think that the Frenzy Berserker is a little ahead of the paladin, um, but the paladin's utility and mitigation is still greater enough that I think the players are reporting that the Barbarian falls behind, which is why we're looking at a little more DPS on the Frenzy Berserker and maybe a touch more mitigation. I mean, the players definitely told us that they want sort of a high damage, maybe less mitigation, more dangerous tree somewhere in the Barbarian, so we made that into Frenzy Berserker. The thing about Frenzy Berserker is I see a lot of comparisons on Frenzy Berserker to Swashbuckler or Paladin saying that the other classes do uh, 
good damage in comparison and the Frenzied Berserker isn't that far above them. But Frenzied Berserker has a lot more AoE. Uh, maybe a Paladin with a two-handed sword using uh, the Cleaves from Knight of the Chalice might be competitive, but Swashbuckler certainly isn't. So um, I think one of the expectations is the single target damage of Frenzied Berserker can't be that much higher than the single target specialists because it does so much AoE. Sure. Uh, it is an AoE focused tree. Now there is one other question that's come up in chat. I believe this was uh, spurred by maybe a forum comment that we had made earlier. You know, one of the things that is uh, makes the Paladin currently very nice in the DPS department, shall we say, with update 23 is Holy Sword. And uh, we had uh, mentioned something about perhaps scaling back Holy Sword just a little bit. Is that going to be an update 24? Yeah. We're losing the, the Holy Sword is so good with the crit that it really doesn't need the plus weapon damage. Right. But, and we don't want to touch the crit. We like the, the fact that the Paladins have a cool spell to look forward to at level 14. So we don't want to dial it back too much, but the plus weapon damage and some of the enhancement bonus it gets are probably gratuitous considering it's one of the best um, crit enhancing abilities in the game. So we'll leave the crit in place, which is what players really like. Um, and we'll probably dial back the plus weapon damage, and then I think a point of enhancement bonus damage. Sure. That way uh, it, it will still allow you to hit like a truck and see those big crit numbers, but it won't add as much passive DPS. It was described as, quote, a bit overpowered right now <laughs> in our chat room. <laughs> By a fair least. assessment. So, all right, let's look at the uh, frenzied berserker core enhancements. Uh, die hard feat is the first one. You get the die hard feat, which means you automatically stabilize while incapacitated. Um, frenzied toughness will give you additional healing amplification and maximum hit points, uh, plus twenty hit points. Uh, frenzy. You can actually expend ten hit points to enter a frenzy, which increases your strength by two, and. Um, that scales with 100% melee power. I notice our description says it adds Vicious to your melee weapons, but my understanding is we've removed that. Uh, it's still doing the 2 to 12 damage, but the, we should really rename it because the Vicious is not dealing damage to you. It's different from the, the weapon oh, okay. enhan mutation enhancement. Okay, so just straight extra 2d6 uh, damage to your attack. And oh, then yeah. you'll get uh, passively 5 melee power. Uh, Frenzied Toughness gives you plus 60 maximum hit points, plus 20 healing amplification, and plus 20 physical resistance. Uh, death Frenzy, you can expend 20 hit points uh, to enter a Death Frenzy for a minute, gives you a plus 4 strength. A critical damage multiplier of plus 1 on rolls of 19 or 20. So what that means is if your weapon was dealing plus 2, uh, had a critical damage multiplier of uh, 2, so it would be uh, you know 2 times whatever. Uh, then you would do, on a roll of 19 or 20, that would uh, increase uh, increase by 1, so a times 3. And then your uh, weapons, uh, your melee weapons gain Greater Vicious, which is plus 46 damage to your attacks, and uh, that scales with melee power. That one's still saying uh, 1d3 damage to yourself. I think that's been removed. Though. I believe that yeah. has been removed. Yeah. But we may need to fix that text. Uh, Grumpy Cuss asks, is that form of Vicious still untyped damage? Yes. Okay, cool. And then uh, Storm's Eye, you activate to get plus one melee damage that gains one stack every six seconds, up to 25 stacks, and ends when you are below 50% health. So as long as you're above 50% health, you'll get plus one melee damage, uh, one stack every six seconds, up to 25 stacks. So kind of an incentive to stay alive there. And it does, I should note, it does cost 100 hit points to cast. Or to activate. I think some of the cores we were talking about uh, beefing up the hit points and healing amp a little bit um, to give them some more survivability. Okay. All right, uh, looking at tier one, that's uh, plus one, plus two, or plus three rage uses per rest. Uh, pretty straightforward there. Cracking attack is an activated attack, deals plus one weapon extra damage. Uh, and also, damaging enemies will reduce their AC by 1, 2, or 3, depending on investment in ranks. And then additionally, the attack will deal plus 2 or plus 3 weapon damage with additional uh, ranks in this enhancement. Uh, die Harder. Your range... Von <laughs> your range... Von <laughs> Sorry, I like... 
<laughs> I was just looking at Die Hard the other day. All right, uh, your range of unconsciousness extends by uh, five hit points. It goes up to uh, 10 and 15 with additional rank, so uh, that basically gives you a little more leeway before you die. If you drop below one health, you gain temp 10 temporary hit points, and it can trigger only once every five minutes. That skills up to uh, 20 and 30 temporary hit points. So basically, when you're hit, you go below one health, you'd technically be unconscious. You have a wider range before you die, and on top of that, you will gain up to, say, 30 temporary hit points, which may actually be enough to get you back uh, back up uh, right away. Right. And it again, might, that might uh, save you for a little bit, Yeah, and then give you a chance to drink a potion or whatever, whatever will give you real hit points. Yep. Uh, power rage plus one, two or three strength while raging. And then Athletics is plus one Balance, Jump, or Swim. Well, all of them. It's also got a, yeah. the, oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Sorry. The, yeah. the third rank has something that not everyone has noticed in the past, because in the past we didn't show you the final rank, uh, so I'm glad we got that changed. Uh, but now, it, when you activate Barbarian Rage, you get a 35% action boost to movement speed, which is a, pr a nice little perk for taking all three ranks of Athletics in there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, someone is asking um, that uh, uh, Crexus Pendragon mentions that it appears that we have removed vicious weapons from our loot tables. I guess I haven't seen a vicious weapon in a while. Do you know if that's true or not? I don't know for sure offhand. Yeah. Um, it's certainly possible. I guess we'd have to look into that. Sorry, I don't have a, a definitive answer for you. Uh, Grumpy Cuss also asks, and this is related to a popular way to... Uh, keep yourself alive as a barbarian is it possible to adjust the stack size of silver flame healing potions uh he would like say 50 or 100 uh, rather than the 10 currently to help with healing for a pure barbarian uh that's a suggestion i guess we need to uh, take a look at uh you know silver flame healing potions are a pretty popular way for uh, barbarians in particular to keep themselves alive melee classes in general so all right, uh, looking at Tier 2 here, Angry Arms, plus 1, 2, or 3% chance of triggering weapon effects on glancing blows, and plus 3, 4, or 5% glancing blow damage. Uh, so if you're doing glancing blows with your weapons, uh, this basically just has an increased chance to do those uh, additional weapon effects, and uh, to everyone in, that's affected by the glancing blows, and then just additional damage overall. Body Blow uh, damages enemies with a cracking attack at... Uh, Oh, damage enemies rather with your cracking attack reduces their fortitude saves by 1, 2, or 3 for 20 seconds. Uh, the next one, Blood Tribute, is an active uh, ability. You'll get uh, plus 50, 100, or 150, depending on rank investment, temporary health for one minute, and uh, every epic level you add, uh, you have, rather, adds 25 uh, temporary hit points, and then you do have a stacking minus one penalty to constitution until you rest or die. So this is basically a way to give yourself uh, a whole bunch of temporary health at the cost of overall health when that temporary hit points are gone until you rest or die. Yeah, I I, it's potentially yeah. a lot of hit points between rests, and you can use it preemptively, so... All right, uh, extra action boost is plus one, two, or three additional action boosts, uh, boost uses per rest. Sprint boost is uh, pretty straightforward, plus 35, 40, or 50% action boost bonus to movement speed for 20 seconds, so that's nice. And that was uh, popular in the old Barbarian tree. Uh, Mad Munitions, we're heading up to tier three now, plus one, two, or three percent chance of triggering weapon effects on glancing blows. And uh, plus 3, 4, or 5% glancing blow damage. Just another way to increase those uh, glancing blow um, uh, overall damage that you deal. And weapon effects. Uh, Supreme Cleave for Blood Trail. This is tier 3. Uh, costs 3 fewer hit points, 6 fewer hit points, or 10 fewer hit points to activate. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Well, that's the next one to the right is Supreme Oh, uh, there we Cleave, go. There so. we go. All right, I was actually... There we go. Supreme Cleave. So let's look at that one first. It's a tactical melee cleave. Attack enemies all around you. You lose 10 hit points. And uh, the investment in this uh, it shortens the cooldown uh, that's involved from 9 seconds to 6 and then to 3 seconds. So, uh, you know, cleaving is obviously a big part of the uh, Frenzied Berserker 
tree and barbarians in general. We have a lot of barbarian cleaves. <laughs> right, and Supre Supreme Cleave is basically the best cleave. It's got the shortest cooldown of all of them, so... Yep. And then uh, the uh, stat for the Friends of Berserker is plus one constitution. You can take that up to twice. We're now heading up to the tier four. Crazy Strike. When you score a critical hit with your activated uh, cracking attack, and that's back down on tier one. For 12 seconds, you'll get... Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, so... So I, sorry, interrupted a little early. For yeah. 12 seconds, you gain a bonus to your weapon damage up to one at tier three. It all, the current Lemania has text that says you lose 20 armor class and physical resistance, but that's an error in the text and should not be happening on Lemania. And we are definitely, if that's not working, we're definitely planning on removing it. That shouldn't be there. Oh, okay. The, the penalty. So it'll, instead of rather than having a penalty, it'll simply just allow you to do additional uh, uh, weapon damage when you score a uh, critical attack with your cracking, a critical hit with your cracking attack. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, exhausting blow deals plus two, plus three, or plus four weapon damage, a 1d6 strength damage, a 1d6 dexterity damage. That goes up to 2d6 and then uh, 3d6, uh, depending on, on investment. And that's an active attack as well. And that's pretty straightforward as well. Uh, Wade in. When you Supreme Cleave, you'll get a plus one primal bonus to attack and minus one AC per enemy damaged, up to three maximum. And that goes up to six and then up to ten maximum with uh, further investment. Right. And I think that's another place where we failed to update the text and we've actually removed the penalty to your armor class. The AC penalty oh. is not intended to be there. Oh, okay. And I don't know that we necessarily have a lot of primal bonuses to attack elsewhere, so that's a pretty good way to boost up your attack. Maybe we have some that I just can't think of them, but... Uh, yeah, right. Unless you know of a whole bunch of primal bonuses to attack I can't think of. <laughs> Not off the top of my head. <laughs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> Alright, so let's head up to Tier 5 on Frenzied Berserker. Focus wide. When you score a Vorpal hit, you increase your chance of triggering weapon effects with glancing blows for by 10% and get 10% glancing blow damage, an additional 10%, uh, for 12 seconds. Really, this whole left-hand column uh, is pretty much about uh, increasing your weapon effects and glancing blow damage. Uh, which is something that that you you know see a lot with say uh, people cleaving and such like that. Uh, focused wrath while raging increase the critical multiplier of all weapons you use by one when you roll a natural 19 or 20, and then with an additional investment, it'll be an additional one uh, that goes up. So pretty straightforward there. Lash out. Supreme Cleave is a 50%, 75 or 82% chance to cause bleed damage. Uh, and this can stack up to uh, five times. So uh, just basically uh, bleed damage is, damage is a damage over time effect similar to the bleed uh, sort of property you'll find on weapons and such like that. Uh, multiple choice. Healing or hurting? For tier five, accelerated metabolism. While raging, you'll get you'll heal two d6 hit points every four seconds, and this scales with melee power, which is critical because, you know, let's just say at level 28, you know, healing, uh, I don't know, eight ten hit points or whatever every four seconds isn't necessarily going to be a big benefit. But when you add in all that additional melee power, that really starts to add up. Uh, keep in mind too that the barbarian we really boosted their healing app in both. A little bit in this tree and a lot in the other trees. So for a pure, a pure barbarian, not only is that increased by melee power, but they're getting a giant boost on all of their healing effects from healing amp. So, sure. And then uh, the other option is uh, while raging, your melee attacks gain an additional plus one weapon to damage. Though so overall through this tree, you can really boost up your your core weapon damage here. And then uh, finally, in Frenzy Berserker, we have Tantrum. Tactical Melee Cleave. Expend 25 hit points to attack enemies around you. This will deal an additional plus 5 weapon damage, and it has a 50% chance to knock down every uh, damaged enemy briefly on a failed fortitude save, which is 10 plus your strength modifier plus your barbarian level. Abilities that trigger on Supreme Cleave also trigger on Tantrum. So, we should have an ability where you, like, stomp your feet. <laughs> I have a three-year-old. I know what a tantrum is like. <laughs> All right, let's let's uh, let's take a look uh, at our chat room here. Real quick question. Uh, Jaren Aron wants a uh, holy sword to be used on other party members. 
That'd be nice. <laughs> I, I suspect we're probably not going to move in that direction. Yeah, yeah, I would think so. Uh, let me see what else uh, we got here. <coughs> uh, it's Psycho Magi just commenting on Vicious. Uh, he hasn't seen any random items recently, to his knowledge, so maybe that's what it is. It's still available in named items, but not showing up at random. Uh, at some point, I know that we did some changes to the random loot system, and some of the effects that had traditionally appeared sort of disappeared, and that's one of the things that we'll be looking at uh, in the future as we go forth and, and looking at our random loot is to see, you know, what effects are gone from the loot system, whether it was intentional or uh, it was unintentional. Yep. Right. So and the, the loss of Vicious might actually be a bug. Someone did point out you can still make Kenneth-crafted weapons, weapons with Vicious if someone's particularly looking for it. All right, I'm just uh, real quick scrolling through our chat to see what else we uh, need to, uh, what, what we can address here. Let's see. All right, I think uh, we're just talking mostly about uh, Holy Sword and Zeal and, and some uh, ways to sort of boost up Vanguard and such like that. So let's take a look at Occult Slayer. This is our third and uh, final Barbarian Enhancement tree. Uh, the core enhancements, a weapon bond. Uh, the first one, you build a psychic bond with your weapon. Uh, strengthen this bond by damaging enemies with attacks. Your weapon likes stealing damage. Each attack adds one to your weapon bond, up to a maximum of 200. Um, and dying resets your weapon bond to zero. So, what is a weapon bond and why do I care? So, so the, the main thing with weapon bond is that it powers a lot of other abilities in the tree. For update 24, there were two major changes to this ability, one of which is it no longer has an internal cooldown of one second. So if you can attack faster or double strike, you can build up weapon bond very, very quickly now, uh, much, much faster than you used to be able to. And you are now allowed to switch your weapons. It used to be that if you switched your weapons, the weapon bond would reset to zero, and it no longer does that. Okay. Uh, resistance is the next one, plus one to all saving throws. Uh, improve your damage reduction by one, get to ten hit points. And if you're a half elf, uh, you can't, it doesn't stack with improved damage reduction there. Elemental defense, uh, when enemy spells deal elemental damage to you, there's a 25% chance you'll gain 25 temporary hit points for 30 seconds. Scaling with melee power, 100%. Uh, they can trigger up to once every 12 seconds, and then it is uh, passive, uh, 30 hit points, 20 healing amp, and uh, improve your damage reduction by an additional 1. Blank Thoughts, you gain the Slippery Mind feat and improve your Barbarian damage reduction. Um, an additional hit points, magic resistance, and healing amplification. Slippery Mind is if you uh, fail a saving throw versus enchantments, you roll a second time. So that gives you a chance to really, uh, like, hold a uh, person, that kind of thing. Uh, force Ward. Uh, hit points, magic resist, healing amplification, damage reduction by another one, and you gain immunity to magic missiles, and plus 5% competence bonus to entirely avoid incoming force damage. That's uh, one way to take care of those magic missiles. Uh, similar to, you know, say, Night Shield or whatever. It's almost like a right. permanent it's Night Shield. Right, very similar to Night yeah. Shield. Um, something else that's worth pointing out, there's, we have a few different abilities, shield de the shield deflection feat is another one that lets you entirely avoid damage. Up before U24, our feedback for that was really not very good because all that happened is you just didn't take the damage. Now there's feedback telling you that you actually avoided the damage and that the ability is doing something. So it was very easy for you to have one of these abilities, uh, even shield deflection I think is up to 40% to dodge certain elemental damage. Uh, but you wouldn't necessarily know it was working. It was hard to tell. Nice, nice. All right, and then finally, our core enhancement, mind over ma or top uh, core enhancement, mind over magic. You have spell resistance equal to your constitution score. People can have a lot of constitution. That's some pretty high spell resistance. I wonder if they're even going to be able to beat Trow here. I would imagine they would, right? You can get your con up to. Uh, I'm sure if you're if you're trying, you can get an extremely high <laughs> spell resistance. It is th this is definitely intended that you know most monsters are not going to be able to beat this if you're really trying to pump up your constitution. Right, and this is something that requires barbarian level twenty um, and forty points spent in the tree. So not something you're just going to splash in, but something you'll invest into. 
Uh, looking at Tier 1 of the Occult Slayer, uh, Extend Rage, it'll last 25, 50, or 75% longer. Um, you have anger management problems, what can I say? Ear Smash, uh, this is an activated attack, dealing plus uh, 0.5, 1, or 1.5 weapon damage. Damaged enemies cannot cast spells for 2, 4, or 6 seconds, depending on investment into the uh, ranks. It's probably one of the best tier 1 abilities in all of the enhancement trees. Um, uh, the ability to just shut down casting for 6 seconds is is uh, pretty strong. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Uh, pairing bond. Uh, while your weapon bond is above 10, and so this is where we're starting to get into this weapon bond stuff, you'll get a plus 2 competence bonus to AC and plus 1 magic resistance. Uh, that goes up to plus 4 and plus 6 of uh, AC, and then 2 and 3 for magical resistance with additional ranks. Uncanny dodger. 1, 2, or 3% dodge. A straight ahead dodge bonus there. And then Awareness is uh, plus one Listen, Search, and Spot. That goes up to two and then three with additional investment. And once you get three points in the tree, you also get plus one to your Reflex Saving Throw. Moving up to uh, Tier 2, Willpower Rage. Uh, you get plus one, two, or three, depending on investment, to your Will Saving Throws while you are raging. Knockout, Ear Smash is the, the one we were just talking about. Uh, puts enemies to sleep. For 6, 12, or 18 seconds. Now, this this isn't like a sleep spell where they have a saving throw. It simply just puts them to sleep, right? It does just put them to sleep, although they are still woken up if you continue to damage them afterwards. Okay, right. And then on a Vorpal attack there, your enemies will be stunned instead. Yeah, I, I use that for, like, what sometimes I'll run into, if I'm playing at higher difficulty, double healers that are healing each other. It's nice to hit one with that and then tab target the other one and start hitting them so the first one can't heal them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, guarding Bond is uh, you get four magic and physical resistance rating at Weapon Bond 30 plus, and that goes up to. Uh, actually, that'll scale. So the first rank gives you that at Weapon 30 plus. Uh, the next rank will also give you an additional plus 4 to physical and magical resistance at 60, and then the third tier, uh, the third rank, will give you an additional plus 4, so a total of up to plus 12 physical and magical resistance at weapon bond 90 plus. And remember, weapon bond goes up to 200. Lessons of Travel, plus 2 energy resistance against acid, cold, electric, fire, and sonic, that scales up to 4 and 6 upon additional ranks. Anti-magic boost is an action boost, uh, plus two to your saving throws versus magic, and that scales up plus four and plus six with additional ranks. Heading on to uh, tier three, the Bond of Retribution. When you're below 50% health, you'll get plus one critical damage multiplier on attack rolls of 19 or 20. Uh, Lessons of Nature, plus two to save earth versus both disease and poison. That scales up to four and six. And if you put all three ranks in, you will not fail disease or poison saving throws on a roll of one. Arcane Encumbrance, when enemies damage you with spells, there's a 10, 20, or 30% chance, depending on ranks, they will be knocked down. Uh, does not affect bosses. The, this Sorry. is definitely a, a bit of a favorite with some players. It is, it is always fun to be running around and have enemies just sort of falling down because they pointed their finger at you. Yeah, I, I really noticed that in my uh, swashbuckler right now. There's a lot of kind of knockdown abilities there, um, and that's uh, been pretty useful. So, uh, Kinetic Bond, uh, Tier 3 here. At Weapon Bond Strength 45+, plus, you will deal 1d20 extra force damage with your attacks, scaling with 200% melee power, and this can trigger once every 3, 2, or 1 second, uh, depending on investment in the uh, uh, ranks. I think the force damage got changed to Bane, and we haven't updated the text. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it should be noted here, this is a uh, uh, this is on Lamania. Uh, this was a build that we put in place on uh, Monday of this week. So some additional work has been done for update 24 here uh, that you're not seeing. And then the uh, stat uh, boosts for uh, Cult Slayer are Wisdom and Constitution. Moving up to the uh, Tier 4, Vicious Strike. It's a melee attack that deals 1, 1.5, one or 2 weapon damage and inflicts feedback on the enemy for 6, 12, or 18 seconds. Feedback is... 
Uh, when they spell cast, the caster will suffer 6 to 60 force damage. Uh, this damage is increased by the target's spell power. So, if you are fighting a tough caster, for example, and they try to cast, they'll take a lot of damage, and uh, that'll even be increased the more tough they are. Alright, uh, Driving Force is a... Uh, uh, you'll expend 60 Weapon Bond to gain plus 10 melee power for 12 seconds, and then the amount that you have to spend goes down with additional ranks to uh, 45 Weapon Bond or 30 Weapon Bond. And then here's our second uh, ability score increase. Heading up to Tier 5, Bond of Destruction, your Bond of Retribution no longer has a health requirement. So that means uh, no longer you can be below 50% health and still get that critical damage multiplier on attack rolls of 19 or 20. A vampiric Bond. At Weapon Bond 100+, plus, your weapon provides you 20 temporary hit points when you damage an enemy, scaling 200% with melee power. Trigger once every 12, 9, or 6 seconds, depending on investment. So really just a way to, uh, what we've seen in other parts of the tree, where you're getting temporary hit points. Um, there's just one way to do that. Right, and to, to explain the math a little bit, the scaling 200% with melee power means that if you have 100 melee power, instead of getting 20 temporary hit points, you would get 60. Because you would get an additional 40. Right, right. Uh, Seeker Strike is a melee attack, so you'll expend 50 stacks of Weapon Bond to have a melee weapon attack for 1, 3, or 5 weapon damage, depending on ranks. This attack has a plus 1 critical threat range and plus 1 critical multiplier, so it's a way to, to dish out extra damage, similar to what we saw maybe in Frenzied Berserker a little bit. Uh, occult Metaline, your bonded weapon, gains Occult Metaline, which means it bypasses Adamantine, Alchemical Silver, Bishik, and Cold Iron Weapon Reduction. Damage yeah, that, Reduction. That one you used to have to choose which, so that was an increase. Nice. And then finally here we have One Spirit, so you'll get rid of all of your weapon bond. Per bond expended, you heal for two positive energy, in this set, melee power. Passively, uh, with rank investment, you'll get 10, 20, or 30 hit points, or 4, 8, and then 12 magic resistance. So just a kind of a, a quick heal, and it does have a, a two-minute cooldown on that. Right. The cooldown gets dramatically shorter as you rank it up. It's also, if you have full weapon bond, if you have 200 weapon bond, you're going to heal for an awful lot. The, this can almost take you from you know, one hit point to nearly full, depending on how many hit points you have. Right, I mean, let's just, just do a quick math. If you do have 200 weapon bond, without, before you scale it with melee power, you're looking at 400 uh, uh, healing right. right there. And that's ignoring the healing amp that you're probably yeah. also getting because you're an occult slayer. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you're right about the cooldown. Uh, with th three investment, uh, three ranks in this, uh, the cooldown is a mere 15 seconds. So I guess what I'm saying is if, if uh, this is interesting to you, probably want to spend three ranks in it. <laughs> and there's our, uh, there's our barbarian trees here. Uh, any kind of final thoughts on barbarian? Uh, you know, uh, we're still we should mention? We're st I think players have gotten to play it on the Mania. We're still happy to hear their feedback. We're still doing minor, minor tweaks at this point. So, yep, yep. Uh, we've had some uh, question about release date in our chat room. I don't know how comfortable. I guess I was saying the first half of December at the uh, is our goal at the uh, start of the live stream here. Uh, I don't know if we want to get more specific than that. Um, you know, we're looking uh, within the next. Uh, I guess. Uh, well, what do you? I don't know. Can we say? <laughs> yeah, think? I'm currently, we're, currently, what we're aiming at, and I will even give you a date with the, with the sort of online understanding that the date may change if we find bugs or or something. But we're looking at a December seventh date, assuming that everything goes well. Yep. Uh, let me correct you. Uh, December eighth. December seventh is a Sunday. Yeah. Which uh, we may be busy on the seventh, but uh, the eighth will be the day we're targeting. Now, it's like like, like uh, you know, Sverlin just mentioned, uh, th that could change a little bit. So, we, but we are looking for that week, probably at yeah. least. I hope. At the very least. I hope I'm not misremembering. No, no, that is correct. That is correct. Yep, yep. I uh, uh, Crexus Pendragon asks, any DDO letter in the new year of what will be coming out? Uh, yes, I think uh, I think uh, we're going to be working uh, with Severlin here to put together some kind of producer's letter. Uh, starting, I don't know, maybe 
sometime in January if we can get it out, maybe a little bit later than that, perhaps around the anniversary, uh, something like that. But we'll, ha we'll have kind of a, a, a new look at maybe what you can expect in 2015 uh, once we cross into 2015 there at some point. Yeah, the big, the big uh, excitement around here about working on Temple of Elemental Evil is uh, we're, all, we're all working on that happily and uh, psyched to get that out to you. Uh, let me just see if we have any last-minute questions before we uh, call it. I see discussion on trap making. Uh, so a request for dropping more greater tokens of the twelve from epic raids, like Eberron ones. Uh, we can take that under under advisement. Uh, are the mirror auras, uh, the glamoured weapon auras, available on the Lamania store yet? Uh, no, we're having some issues with our uh, DDO store on Lamania right now. So uh, they're not currently available. But if you do uh, see a dev on, uh, particularly, say, during our preview events, and you could find out uh, those dates uh, by visiting the Lamania forums, we'd be happy to drop some for you. And uh, So if, if you're interested in checking out the uh, weapon, uh, glimmered weapon auras, uh, just PM me on the forums, and I'll find a time that I can just mail you some or something like that. I'd be happy to do it. So. All right, uh, I think that's going to do it with this week's live stream. Uh, we are going to be back for the uh, fall fling here at uh, 1.30, uh, I think. At least I'm going to be here. We'll see if anyone else shows up. Uh, if you are traveling this Thanksgiving, uh, be safe. Be well. We really appreciate you guys uh, joining us here on DDO. Don't forget we got Double Daily Dice. Uh, we got plus 20% Heroic and Epic XP through Sunday. A whole bunch of sales being uh, kicked off throughout the day here today. Uh, finally, I want to thank people uh, for Movember. Uh, I'm taking donations through December 1st, so this is the final weekend to donate if you're interested in. Uh, helping me out. We're raising money for men's health, and uh, we do have some incentives for DDO players who do wish to donate to us. You can find my page on the website mobro.co slash jerrysnook, and that's J-E-R-R-Y-S-N-O-O-K. I uh, had a $1,000 goal. I haven't hit that personally, but Team Turbine has uh, crossed well over the $1,000 mark. I believe we're at about 1150 as of the time of my speaking right now. So that's enough to unlock the incentives that we uh, had there. And, but this is a great chance to get in a last-minute donation. Uh, Movember raises money for, say, testicular cancer research, uh, prostate cancer research and support programs, mental health and things like that. So I appreciate everyone who's uh, joined me, and uh, hopefully by next week this, uh, shall we say, not necessarily beautiful mustache should hopefully be gone. <laughs> I think it's gorgeous. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Severlin and Vark Wheel, for joining me on uh, today's live stream. Uh, really appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. All right. We will see you back in about a half hour here soon. Thanks for watching.